To insert symbols into a single line diagram, choose the Line Diagram Command Manager panel that you see here at the top of the screen. The Line Diagram panel will only be available if you are in a single line wiring diagram or in a mixed scheme diagram, as you can see from the new menu right here. Scheme, Wiring Line Diagram, and Mixed Scheme. That menu will only be available for wiring line diagrams and mixed schemes. To insert a symbol, choose the Insert Symbol button on the Command Manager. Here, you can see the last used symbol already being placed for us. To change that symbol, we can choose Other Symbol and browse through the Symbol Selector menu. The Symbol Selector is broken into several different interface areas. First, we have menus here at the top that show us properties and a preview for any object selected. We can also look at this in a list mode or in a thumbnail mode and choose the language. In this case, let's set that to English. And you'll notice that we have a tree on the left-hand side of the screen. This tree is broken into two menus, the classification and the filters. In the classification menu, we can browse through different categories of components. These categories cannot be changed. However, if you create your own custom symbol and want to place it into a category that doesn't make sense here, we do have a miscellaneous category. We can also filter through the interface here. So I can choose different types of libraries that the software comes with. We can search by name, description, and if the symbols have a manufacturer associated with them or a manufacturer's part number, we can also sort on it in that way. In this case, I know I'm looking for a circuit breaker, so I could go ahead and place it. If I double click it, that's the easiest way of inserting it onto my schematic. However, you can use the select button at the bottom of the screen. It will then present to us a preview of the symbol that I can place anywhere on the screen. Before placing and dropping the symbol on, there's a couple of things I just want to point out. Under the options, there is a check mark for automatic marks. By default, that is not turned on. So I'll show you what happens with the default setting. If you click anywhere on the screen to place the symbol, you are presented with the symbol properties menu, confirming that it's a circuit breaker classified component, and it's also presenting us with a root number. So the root of Q is indicative of a circuit breaker. This Q can be set to any number or letter that you wish. The number next to it is a suffix, so this is the first circuit breaker we're placing, and it's called Q1. It concatenates that as one mark number. Other information can be applied to the symbol as you drop it on. So if you have a description of what the function of this circuit breaker is, you could apply it here under the description. Also note that there's a location and function menu at the top. It's automatically placing this circuit breaker in the main electrical closet. If I click this, you can see the default locations that I have in my template. We're going to discuss this in a future lesson, but just take note that it's automatically putting it in the main electrical closet. If I say OK, it then places the Q1 circuit breaker on our page. To zoom out like I just did, I did a double click with my middle mouse wheel button. To insert another circuit breaker, of course I could go ahead and insert the symbol, and it gives me the last used symbol. In this case, I can choose automatic marks because I know I'm not placing any manufacturer data on this yet, and I'm going to accept the default marking number, which is Q2. It automatically increments that for us. Another way of inserting symbols is to copy and paste symbols. So if I want another circuit breaker, I can right click on the symbol, choose Copy, right click here anywhere, and choose Paste. Of course, your Windows shortcuts of Control C, Control V, and Control X will work. So I'll place that next to this component right here. Now you notice how nicely they're placing and grouping together, and that's because I have my snap settings turned on. So if I right click here at the bottom of my menu, I have a snap menu. By right clicking, I get my snap parameters. I can see that snap is turned on, and my snap spacing is set to an eighth of an inch. I also have my grid options and object snap options as well. This is useful when we're getting into drawing our own symbols. Let's close this out. And if I turn Snap off by hitting this button and insert another symbol, you'll notice how hard it is to actually get exactly what you want. So it's good to use the Snap settings. 
Let's undo that. I can also choose the Windows Standard Control Z for that. We'll turn on our snap again by hitting F9 on our keyboard or clicking the button. You can, in fact, copy and paste multiple objects. So let's say we need a total of five circuit breakers. I can select both Q2 and Q3 by holding the control key and selecting multiple objects. Then I can right click and choose the copy menu, and then right click again to choose paste, and then put them where I wish. And as you can see, it's incremented those numbers automatically. Other ways of selecting objects include window selection. I can draw a window from the left to the right and select any object completely in that window. We can also perform a crossing window operation, which lets you do a window selection, but just touching the objects will select both objects inside of that window. If I did that the same way with the normal window from left to right, I wouldn't get that ability.